Welcome back to Crazy Dave's Crew. I'm Laura, and you're watching Thursday Threads. I was playing around with my Halloween fabrics, because some of them are just cute and they're adorable, and some of them are off the wall and offbeat. Bright colors, dark colors. Well, the one thing I did notice is most of what I had was orange and black. So I did want to go out looking for some that were not those colors. And it was tough. But I got to thinking that we could jazz it up with some bright solids. Very simple little project, but it is a different way of doing a quilt as you go. So I took some five and a half inch squares of my solids and my Halloween fabrics and I just did a nine patch. So I've got about a 17 inch square of a Halloween fabric and that's going to be my back. So I'm going to put that right side down, wrong side up. And I am putting a very thin piece of batting on top of my backing. Making sure I smooth it out real good. And then I have my nine patch. I started out with five and a half inch squares of solids, bright solids, and some cutesy Halloween. I'm just going to make sure that's nice and smooth. So I've got my sandwich. I have my backing about 17 inches square. I have my batting again about a 17 inch square. Not terribly worried about the accuracy of these cuts because I'm going to be trimming them. And then I have my nine patch. And these are five and a half inch squares. So we've got five, ten, fifteen and a half inches. Now when I do my quilting I'm just going to go from at an angle, okay, and then back again this other way. But there's going to be a seam here on these outside seams, so if I start here and there's a seam, it's not going to be in the corners. Like this, see? So even though it was in the corner, when I did it, You've got to adjust that, otherwise you're going to end up with this. Now, this is one I'm just going to have at home and for messing around in, so I'm not real worried. But, to get a better I just want to make a little mark a quarter of an inch in and that'll that that will be my guide again like I said this is not a uh, you know, for a contest or a quilt show I was just kind of messing around a little having some fun with my scraps and seeing what I could come up with. So I'm just going to go in about a quarter of an inch. Again, I'm not... I won't be losing a lot of sleep if it's not perfect. But there may come a time when I do want it to be perfect. Now the corners here, they're going to have a seam this way and this way, so it should work out without any problem. So again, I'll just make sure it's all nice and smooth, no bulky, 
and then I'm just gonna, gonna kind of eyeball it on my machine. So I'm just gonna use a straight stitch and I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it going from corner to corner. Going in some diagonals. I've got gray at the top as my top thread and I've got black for my bobbin. Okay, if you have to stop and adjust, let's just kind of eyeball in it. And again, I know that the outside corners should adjust themselves with the seams on the two sides. I'm going to back it up and then I'm going to tie it off. And this time I'm going to start at my little mark. So that was about right there. And I'm going to go straight to the other corner. And then I want to aim it towards my other little mark. what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and finish this up and I will show you what comes next. Be right back. So another way to make sure that you're about a quarter inch away from the corner is if you use your piecing foot. So we know if that's about a quarter of an inch. So if I put my piecing foot guide right there on that corner, then I should be part near on target. So let's give that a go. So there we have it. We're not done yet, but we're, we, we're almost there. So I've just gone with my angles, okay? So that when you look at them, you see they've just got a nice little X in the, in the square. The next thing that I want to do, I have got, I made a two and a half inch strip of this black tonal fabric and I'm going to press it I always cut a little bit bigger than what it has to be that gives me some wiggle room I'd much rather waste that little bit of fabric than have to go do it all over again so I'm gonna press it in half So I've started with a two and a half inch strip of fabric. I'm pressing it in half. I'm kind of making my own bias tape, except I didn't cut it on the bias. And then to give me a guide for sewing it, I'm gonna open it up. 
and almost in half, not quite. Okay, see there's my press line. going to set that aside. So I'm going to want to square this up, size it down, get all this excess off. So I'm going to kind of measure here. This should be, so this is five inches, that's five and a quarter. So I should be able, ten and a quarter. Yep, we're pretty good. Let's just trim that off one side at a time. And I like trying to include both of those blocks because that way I know I'm getting a little bit closer to what the other ones are. If I just did the one block, ah, I could be terribly off. I'm just going to do that to all four sides. And again, because I know ten and a quarter is what it should be to include the center and the outer. Now the way we're doing this, this is okay because that's going to get covered up. I'm okay. I just want to make sure I'm squared. It's the beauty of this particular method. So you can make oopses and you can make some mistakes and go oh man and it's okay because it's going to get covered up but that's also why I want to go with the ten and a quarter to kind of make sure I'm accurate and a quarter lines are on that seam. I'm going to cut this side. And this should be just about perfect. Now I want to put my joining piece on this side and I'm going to attach to the other ones I've got. So I'm just going to put it here and again I'm going to pin and I don't know if you can see it in the camera but you've got two seam, two press seams here. That's the center and right there and I'm going to stitch right along this press seam. And I'm going to do it this way so because I want my joining pieces to be about the same on both the front and the back. So if I measured it really, if I sewed it down really close up to here, I wouldn't have very much in the back and I'd have a lot in the front. But I want it to be about even. So I'm going to sew right along this press seam. Okay, so I'm still using my piecing foot. I could have switched it around to a regular sewing foot, but I kind of like it because it's got this little guide right there, and I can just line that up with that pressed mark. And I left it gray in the top and black in the bottom. And away we go. There 
there we have it. So I've got this one where I've already got it put together. I've already got my piece on this side and it is ready for me to join. So we just need to line these up. Kind of make sure that you're nice and even. And for the most part, you should just be able to pin this because it should be the same size. And we are going to sew these together. And I'm going to want to sew these together not in the block, not in the, the batting, but as close to the batting as I can get. It's kind of like Price is Right. I want to get as close as I can without going over. So for that, I'm going to use my zipper foot. A piping foot. Basically get a foot where your needle is here and there's not a lot of bulk on the side. Turn that off. So we're just going to take my piecing foot off and I'm going to put my zipper foot Um, this zipper foot from Brother, I've got two places that I can attach it, and I'm going to attach it to the far left. Put my needle to the far left, because that's, that's where my uh, seam needs to be. Again, I've got gray as my top thread, black in my bobbin, and I'm just going to get this as close as I can. If you can see where my needle is, right here. So my stitches are going to be right along there. There's my batting, and my stitches are going to come right up to them. And that's why I like want to use this foot for doing this part of the project. So there's our back so far. So this can be a reversible. The front. So we are just going to again fold things down and press it. Almost to the seam, not quite. But if you hit the seam in life as we know it won't end. Yeah, you know, the biggest thing, and I don't mind showing y'all my my errors and my goofs. Uh, because trust me. <laughs> There's a whole lot more that I don't show you. Uh, believe me. <laughs> but you need to know we're all practicing. We're all learning. I learn as much, if not more, from making these videos than anybody could learn from watching them. And then when it comes over, so we've got that seam right there. This is going to come over and cover that right up. I 
and because I know I want to sew it this way on the machine, have the bulk on the outside, don't have to use Halloween fabric. I was just having fun using up some scraps. And you got it. We're going to do this again on this side. And if you don't want to press it, you could always just finger play it. Okay. And then you just sew it down along the edge. So let's do that and I'll be right back. And the back by no means perfect but like I said you can see on the back here they're about the same size as the front and you can do one block at a time they have, um, you know, licensed characters, so if you know someone who loves UT, who loves Snoopy or Mickey Mouse, um, Sonic, you know, whatever, you, whatever it is that you find, this is a very quick, very easy, and as long as your machine is cooperating, very low stress, and it goes pretty quickly. Um, I like to do assembly line. Thank you, Mr. Ford for that invention that I would go and do all my my strips of three, then my nine patches, then I'd go through and do my quilting and then put it all together. Now, how do we add to it? The well, same way we did the side by side. Trim this off, add a strip along this side and then you can just do another one. Easy breezy. Make it your own. Have fun with it. We're so glad you joined us today. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Right here on Crazy Dave's Crew. Uh -huh.